So this is a good friend of mine, Jess Rogers. 2001, she went to, to hospital for a routine operation and contracted an infection during her stay. She nearly lost her life. Unfortunately, she's not the only one. In the States alone, two million people every year go to hospital and pick up an infection. It's crazy, right? What's worse is nearly 100,000 of those die every year. This is like in the last few years. These are people who went to hospital for care and got the complete opposite. The number one culprit causing between 40 to 60 percent of cases of, the, of these infections is poor hand hygiene. So simply put, doctors and nurses are not washing their hands properly. Now, washing your hands properly sounds really simple, right? But it's actually quite complicated and quite hard. Every time you touch a patient or anything in their surroundings, you have to wash your hands pretty vigorously. For a nurse or a doctor, that translates to hundreds or thousands of times a day. It can take up to an hour of your day just washing hands to be compliant. And there's um, bodies around the world, infection control units in Australia, um, that are tasked with trying to get these people to comply. There's rules, regulation, training, auditing, and in some extreme cases in the States, there are spies that go into hospitals and observe the staff, and if they're not compliant, they're issued a warning that they may lose their job. And all of this hasn't fixed the problem. So a couple of months ago, we were approached to look at this problem differently, to look at this through the lens of design. Now, we're a bunch of creators and technologists. Importantly, we don't know anything about healthcare. So we're naive to this problem, and we don't bring all the bias and the history that a lot of the people who work in the industry have. And we discovered some, something pretty interesting and surprising for everybody. So our first step was to understand the problem uh, at a deeper level. So Tim, our senior experience designer, collaborated with Don and Keith, who uh, run Monash Health, a group of hospitals in Melbourne. And he, he spent some time in, in hospitals to understand this problem. And he, got literally he identified literally hundreds of problems that were causing this issue. From simple things like the actual location of these hand sanitizer pumps, these pink things you can see, through to the actual practicality of how they work. When you're in a high-pressure situation, you quickly pump, push down on one of these pumps, the nozzle can spin around and squirt stuff everywhere. You know, you've done that yourself. There are much broader issues as well, where there's, while well, there's an awareness that this needs to happen, the doctors and nurses don't truly understand the importance of hand hygiene in delivering patient care. They see it more as a chore. And we came across something even more challenging. In the first couple of weeks, the senior staff, the doc senior doctors and nurses, started to actually reject Tim. They didn't, want, didn't like his presence there. He was seen as another guy from infection control who was looking at them, judging them, and going to critique them. So this was a really important part in this project a moment. We realized that up until now, all of these bodies around the world have been looking at the, do the doctors and the nurses as the bad guys. They've been looking at them as the problem. When really, these people are hardworking, peop uh, hard trying to deliver patient care. They're really the good guys. So at this point, we changed our approach in the project, and we got them involved in the process, as opposed to observing them, looking from the outside. So our next step was to take these hundreds of problems that we'd identified and group them into five core problem themes. From simple things like the education understanding about this issue with patients and staff, the practicalities of the product that I spoke about, the, the challenges of the, of the interaction with patients, which, of which there are numerous. Um, there's a real lack of data around usage of the pumps and the broader cultural issues at an organizational level that exist. So we took these five problem themes and workshopped them with, with 60 designers, developers, um, doctors and nurses in a really high energy session and generated hundreds of ideas. The energy in the room was amazing. One of, the, one of the nurses in my group changed from the start of the session being quite dismissive and a bit deflated. She really kind of didn't want to be there. And by the end of it, she was beaming with energy and coming up with some crazy ideas. For the first time, she'd been seen as not the problem, but as a part of the solution. For the first time, this, these staff were empowered to solve this problem. 
So we're looking at a bunch of, of these ideas and, and, look, and exploring implementing them. We've only been on this for a few months, so it's early days. Th simple things like improving these pumps to make them not spin around and other things. The staff that got fired up from this workshop have since gone off on a day-to-day -day basis in the hospitals are trialling different things to try and solve this problem. This one example is where they put tape, simply put tape around the floor on, of the bed and they call it the zone of safety. So it's a, a message to each other that when you're in that zone, you need to be hyper aware of the safety of the patient and the number one priority is hand hygiene. Just simplifying a very complicated problem. We're also looking at ways that we can capture data Next slide. Um, of the pumps, they're currently changed at random. No one knows how much is being used where and when. So we're looking at very simple ways, like logbooks or things like NFC, to capture this data and feed it back into the teams so they're enabled to be able to problem solve as they go. But the thing that's most exciting for Don, the head of general medicine for, uh, medicine for Monash Health, is the fact that the staff have gone from being completely disengaged in this problem, seeing it as more of a chore that the, these bad, evil bad guys from infection control come to them and you know, tell them off, to now being actively engaged in it. They've taken ownership of this problem and are trialling ways to fix it. That was something completely unexpected for all. So we hope that this change in culture and looking at the, these, these people who want to deliver care looking at them as the solution, not the problem, will one day see a reduction in the number of people who catch an infection when they visit a hospital. Thank you. So this is a good friend of mine, Jess Rogers. 2001, she went to, to hospital for a routine operation and contracted an infection during her stay. She nearly lost her life. Unfortunately, she's not the only one. In the States alone, two million people every year go to hospital and pick up an infection. It's crazy, right? What's worse is nearly 100,000 of those die every year. This is like in the last few years. These are people who went to hospital for care and got the complete opposite. The number one culprit causing between 40 to 60 percent of cases of, the, of these infections is poor hand hygiene. So simply put, doctors and nurses are not washing their hands properly. Now washing your hands properly sounds really simple, right? But it's actually quite complicated and quite hard. Every time you touch a patient or anything in their surroundings, you have to wash your hands pretty vigorously. For a nurse or a doctor, that translates to hundreds or thousands of times a day. It can take up to an hour of your day just washing hands to be compliant. And there's um, bodies around the world, infection control units in Australia, um, that are tasked with trying to get these people to comply. There's rules, regulation, training, auditing, and in some extreme cases in the States, there are spies that go into hospitals and observe the staff and if they're not compliant, they're issued a warning that they may lose their job. And all of this hasn't fixed the problem. So a couple of months ago, we were approached to look at this problem differently, to look at this through the lens of design. Now, we're a bunch of creators and technologists. Importantly, we don't know anything about healthcare. So we're naive to this problem, and we don't bring all the bias and the history that a lot of the people who work in the industry have. And we discovered some, something pretty interesting and surprising for everybody. So our first step was to understand the problem uh, at a deeper level. So Tim, our senior exp experience designer, collaborated with Don and Keith, who uh, run Monash Health, a, a group of hospitals in Melbourne. And he, he spent some time in, in hospitals to understand this problem. And he, got literally he identified literally hundreds of problems 